And now I'm going to talk about the first version of EX, the evolution strategy. We call this as one plus one EX. Okay. Now we are going to understand what does it mean by one plus one. So when we talk about one plus one ES, the first one right here, it means that we only have one parent. So that means the population size that is one. And then the second one, it means that each time we are going to generate of Spain. When I men mention each time, it means that each iteration we are going to generate one of Spain. So right here. So that means when we get to this point, initialize the strategy parameter as well as initialize the population, uh, initialize the population at the t equals zero. So that means right here, we only have one of Spain, uh, sorry, one parent right here. So that is x equals x1, x2, so and so associated with this x we have the sigma that is sigma one sigma two so and so yeah now again sigma that is the strategy parameter of this x and each x one x two associated with sigma one sigma two mm, accordingly so we have x and sigma in the population now, when we talk about one plus one ES, we do not have recombination. Yeah, no recombination process. That means we do not perform crossover. So up to now in this for loop, because mu equals one. So we only evaluate the only X in this population. Again, for this one, we have lambda equals one because we are going to generate one of spring. So the first number right here represent mu, the second number right here represent lambda. So when we get to this point, we do not need to select row parent because because we only have one element, one individual in the population. So row that is one as well. So that means each time we will pick the parent and also the only parent in the population is this only X. So each time this will serve as the parent and then so when we pick X and Sigma, we are going to do mutation. That is this point. When we do mutation and then so, so we will use this formula. This formula is very similar to the continuous genetic algorithm, the mutation process in the continuous genetic algorithm. So look at this xj, so that is xj, j that is from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to nx, that is each element right here. Yeah, so we have each element right here. So each element right here, which is going to perform, for example, when I when j that is 1, we use x prime 1 t denote the t iteration one that is the first element in this decision variable plus x one t that is this guy now, this guy that is this guy plus sigma j sigma j that is this element so that means at this iteration we have this sigma one it is a real value times n one zero one note that n one zero one it is a Gaussian noise it means that we are going to generate a random value right here this random value this this is according to the Gaussian distribution zero it means that the mean right here this is this is, this is zero and one that is the width of that that is um that is one so this value, which will generate a number from minus infinity to infinity, yeah? Okay. So that means if we are going to update x prime, it may not have any limit, but according to the Gaussian noise distribution, 99 point something percent is within three times of the width yeah 
Okay, so anyway, yeah, just remember that when we update this off spin, this guy does not have any limit, yeah. Okay, so that means if we would like to impose some constraint on the decision variable, that is the bound of x, and then so we need to check about that, or we use some techniques to bound the decision variable. And now, this is the way for us to update each x in the decision variable or the individual x. And then the next one, that is we also need to update sigma. We have three methods. The first one, the first method, that is, we call this is non-adaptive. That means sigma, we choose constant value. Sigma 1, for example, 0 0.1, sigma 2, that is 0 0.2, yeah? So we just simply choose constant. Of course, we can extend it into um, um, the iteration dependent case. That is, each iteration we randomly generate sigma, yeah? Okay, but anyway, this is, we call this is non-adaptive because it does not change the value of sigma according to the search performance. Yeah, Another one, we call this is the adaptive method 2. We call this is the one-fifth success rule. So now I'm going to draw, draw a figure. This is the t. So that means we start from 0, 1. It means that t is the number of iteration, 2, so and so. So we are going to create a window. Uh, this window, that is, say, for certain period, that means, say, now um, at this point, that is t, this is t plus t minus 1, t minus 2, dot, dot, dot. we create this window. This window may be, that is, uh, 10 iterations. That means if we would like to determine what value of sigma at this point, uh, when we talk about sigma, I'm talking about the arrow. We have arrow right here. It means that it is a vector. So sigma 1, sigma 2, so and so. So if we would like to determine the sigma at this point, we would like to check about the window here. So in this window, if the number of successful the number of successful mutation over this period and then so we are going to increase the value of sigma or decrease the value of sigma. So we have this rule. If the number of successful mutation over this period that is larger than one fifth, and then we are going to update the sigma like this. So we turn this sigma into sigma pi, and then to every element right here, that is according to this equation. Say so this element that is sigma one times e one third. Now when you do e one third, this value is larger than one. So it means that we are going to increase the value of sigma if the number of successful mutation is larger than one fifth because it because when you increase the value of sigma, the search range is increased. So that means we try to we try to think that if the successful mutation is more than one fifth, our search direction is in a good direction. So we are going to increase the value of sigma so that the step size become larger yeah so to improve the search performance yeah otherwise if the number of successful if the successful mutation that is less than one fifth we are going to do this decrease the sigma according to this equation when you do this equation you will just find out that this value which will lead to a smaller value of sigma. So that means if the successful mutation is not good enough, that is less than one fifth, and then we are going to reduce the value of sigma so that we are going to reduce the search area. That is to add a smaller air we are going to add a smaller value into this X so that we are going to fine tune we we only just fine-tune the value of x in this case yeah 
Okay, so this is the method two. And now we have method three, that is adaptive method as well. But uh, it gives you another idea. But the logic is more or less the same. That means if the search is in a good direction, we increase the sigma. If it is not, we are going to decrease it. If we cannot make decision, keep the sigma the same. So take a look at this one. The first step that is, we are going to have the t axis as well. This is t, this is t minus one, t minus two. So t starts from zero, one, two, many iteration right here. So in the beginning, we are going to create a window. This window, the size that is 10 times nx. So that means in the 10 times nx iteration, we do not make any decision because we would like to have this period to sense whether the search direction is good or not. Yeah, so we just call that some information right here. And now, after this point, this is 10 and X. After this point, we are going to create a window. For example, now I'm going to determine the sigma at the T iteration. Now I'm going to create a window right here. This window size that is from T minus 10 and X to T minus one. So this is this point that is t minus 10 and x. This is the iteration number. This point that is t minus 1. So we are going to measure the nm, the number of successful mutation. I'm going to explain what it is. But anyway, we have nm. If nm number of successful mutation that is less than 2 nx, nx that is the number of element in the decision variable. So if nm is less than 2 nx, we are going to update the sigma, sigma pi by times alpha to sigma j, for example, alpha that is 0 0.85, you will just find out that we reduce the value of sigma, yeah, because the number of success rate successful mutation rate is not better than 2nx. We just find out that the search direction may not be good enough. So we are going to reduce the steps right here. Yeah, okay, reduce the size of sigma. Uh, if nm number of successful mutation larger than 2nx, we interpret that as the search is good enough. So we are going to time sigma by one over alpha one over alpha that is larger than one because alpha that is 0 0.85 in this case it means that sigma pi will be increasing yeah so to indicate that we would like to have a larger step size right here so that to speed up the search this one when nm equals to nx we cannot make a decision. We do not know that whether it is good or not. So we do nothing. Just keep sigma j unchanged. Yeah. So we have these three methods right here. Actually, we can have more variations. Yeah. Okay. So this slide just summarize what I have mentioned about the the three cases: nm less than two nx greater than two nx equals two nx. And now. We go to this point. Now we have, we need to determine the new population. Okay, so up to this point, we have the offspring x prime and we have the population. Yeah, we have the parent in the population. And now this is the selection process. Which one will go to the next population? So Remember that we are doing minimization. So we are going to evaluate x prime as well as x. If f of x prime less than fx, that means we obtain a better solution. x prime is a better solution. So we will take x prime as the, as the parent, as the population in the next iteration. Otherwise, we drop x prime, we keep x in the population in the next iteration. The same applies to sigma. 
if x prime is better, we use sigma prime as the strategy um, st uh, strategy parameter in the in the next iteration. Otherwise, we are going to use the current sigma as the sigma in the next uh, in the next iteration. Uh, now, I'm talking about what does it mean by successful mutation. That means if the cost of x prime that is less than the cost of f x that means the offspring is better than the parent this is defined as successful mutation yeah okay now i'm going to give the overall picture about this one plus one es so we start with this bit mu equals one we only have one parent so we come up with the population with one x one set of parameter associated with x and then now lambda that is one that means we are going to generate only one of spring now that is we do not have recombination we do not need to select parent because we only have one x that is um, in the population so each time this x the selected parent is this guy so mutation we're going to perform mutation using this formula so that means each each x1 to xn x we are going to apply this this equation so that we are going to come up with x1 prime x2 prime xn x prime and so on so that is the mutation right here we will obtain this x simultaneously we obtain the sigma prime as well we apply either method one method two or method three we mentioned right here okay so we have the offspring at this point x prime and sigma prime and that now we are going to do selection this is the selection process i just mentioned after that we already know that which will be t plus one that is the legs population either x or x pi yeah so now we just select the best among uh, the best between these two yeah so once we form p t plus one we repeat this process and then so mutation selection so and so until the stopping criterion has been met.